It's been a strange road, you could say. This all started when I was like, I wonder if I can make a fan cooler type thing that looked similar and uh, functioned similar to like a root style supercharger. And it did work. This did move air. It was super loud. And the chances of it actually being able to be powered by like a fan, slim to none. Then logically, the next step would be to create a centrifugal supercharger. And this did work. It was also sketchy. This, it did move a bunch of air, but it almost caught on fire. <laughs> oh, I see smoke. Uh, it wasn't ideal. Now, I never released any of these models. Well, I released this one, not this one. I didn't really think anybody would want it. Again, super sketchy, didn't work too well. Even though it moved air, it was powered by an RC motor and a battery, so I didn't think anybody would want it. But I was wrong. You asked for this. However, this wasn't its final form. Thank you to Deep Cool for sponsoring today's video with their new AG400 air cooler. The AG400 is a single tower 120 millimeter CPU cooler that builds upon Deep Cool's legacy of high quality cooling performance, but stripped down for a streamlined and efficient package. Enjoy better system performance by keeping things cool with up to 220 watts of heat dissipation power featuring four direct touch heat pipes. The AG400 comes equipped with one ARGB PWM fan with an RPM range from 500 to 2000, producing up to 75.89 CFM of airflow. Deepcool's AG400 comes in both black and white finishes and includes mounting for both Intel and AMD platforms. So if you're looking for a sleek, compact, efficient air cooler for your next build, check out Deepcool's new AG400 using the link in the description below. So I've been working on another project or design behind the scenes. I want to do a PC build, but I want it to kind of be themed. And for that build, I want to have two of these things set up as intakes. I want them to look like turbochargers, superchargers, and I want them to function. I don't want them to just look like it. I want them to provide the intake air for the PC, two of them, and that's it. And then have the exhaust just come out the back of the case. But I don't want it to run off a motor from an RC car and a battery. I want it to run off a normal fan header. So I created this, which it looks similar spins the other direction, but this beast is powered by one 5,000 RPM, 120 millimeter PWM fan that hopefully can go right into my, uh, right into my motherboard. Also, these models will be available for you to download. So you could, if you wanted, download this, all these pieces, put this together and put it in a PC build of your own. Now fitting it inside of a case might be tricky, but if there's a will, there's a way. And who says it has to be inside a case? No one. Now, before I go on and test this thing to see if it actually works at all reasonably compared to another 20 millimeter standard fan, uh, let's go over how this thing is put together and all the pieces you'll need. So if you do want to download this and build it yourself, you'll know how it's done. Step one is going to be getting the fan. Now, the fan I chose is a 5,000 RPM, 120 millimeter PWM fan, and you can get it on Amazon. It's about $19. I thought 5,000 RPM and $20 was a good balance between high RPM and low cost since we're going to be just taking this fan and ripping it apart. Step two is going to be cutting off the blades. Now to do this, I just use a simple side cut and you just want to cut the blades near the hub as best you can. Now just be careful not to damage the hub because that is what we're going to use to seat our compressor wheel. Now that the blades are gone, the next thing we're going to do is kind of smooth out the hub a little bit. And to do this, what I used was a metal file and I essentially just turned on the fan and use this file slowly working it in to just smooth out the blades. Now you don't want to work, you don't want to chew into it too far. You just want to get everything smooth. We'll come back later and fine tune that diameter. But once you get all the blades smoothed, that's where you should stop. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove the fan hub. And again, I did this with a set of side cuts. I just cut the hub near the frame. We want to leave some of that support structure that supports the motor itself intact because we're going to use that to anchor the motor in place within our compressor housing. Once you get all that done, this is where we're gonna go back and get that proper diameter for our hub. Now, rather than give you a specific diameter to hit when you're trying to turn everything down to fit the compressor wheel, I think it's easier if you just print out the compressor opposite file first and then see how it fits. If it doesn't go on at all, you obviously wanna turn the fan back on and use your, I guess, file or sandpaper to turn it down and then just keep retesting the fit. You want it to push on with some force, but you also want it to be removable. If it just, if you have to force it on, you'll never get it off and then it'll just be stuck together. And if it's too loose, obviously it's gonna wobble around and might come loose when you're using it. And then once you have the power plant done, you can go back and print out all the other pieces. Now, every piece you're gonna need for this build, you're gonna need the back plate 
the compressor opposite, the housing opposite, the gasket, the adapter, the adapter gasket, and the hold down. The reason I say opposite is because I took this initial model and I mirrored it because the fan spins in a different direction. So most of the stuff I didn't want to redesign, I just recopied it. Now I had to change the back plate and some other pieces. Those were just added. But make sure you print out the ones that say opposite. Both files will be there. Um, just so the SolidWorks files know where to look if you download the whole entire thing. But you should be good to go. Now I printed everything in PLA, except for the gaskets. The gaskets are TPU. Now you can use any material you want, just make sure you print the gaskets in TPU to get the best performance possible out of this whole situation. Plus you want that extra material in there to get you the proper clearance. Also, I did print this fan. You can see it's like green, but it's also pink. And this new material, at least new to me, I've never seen this kind of material before. It's uh, made by a company called Texanar. And it's essentially a filament that's multicolor, but it's multicolor divided down the entire strand of filament, either in two or three colors. But I'll leave a link down below to that as well, along with the motor. And then you'll also need the hardware for this project, and that'll be down there as well. Now this time around, I did choose to print the compressor housing in two pieces. I did that for a couple reasons. One is that this other thing I'm working on is pretty large, so that assembly, each part is gonna be kind of its own assembly that'll need to go together and then go into the larger assembly and I was kind of just wanting to test different ways to fuse things together. You can print it as one piece if you have a large enough printer. If not, two pieces works fine. You just have to glue them after the fact. And I find that for PLA, there's a material called, well, there's a glue or adhesive called Weld On 4 that's made for acrylics, but it does a decent job for PLA and it's really thin, so it gets down in those cracks really easily. So if you're wanting to glue PLA together, Weld On 4 is a good thing to try. And then for the other hardware we were talking about, what you'll need is 10 M5 by 6 screws, 10 M5 washers, 10 M5 heat set inserts, and then 8 M3 screws. And then the assembly is pretty much the same as this one. The uh, compressor, obviously the fan goes through this back plate, the compressor presses on top of it, and then once you have it in place, there's a back plate on here held on with those eight M3 screws that hold the motor down to keep it from moving, you know, back and out. And then those ribs or those uh, support structures that we have keep it from rotating within there. And then the M5 screws hold the whole entire assembly onto the compressor housing and everything should go together pretty well. Now, even if you print this out and your clearances aren't perfect or maybe your printer has a little bit of issues, even mine, when I put it together, rubbed a little bit, just turn it on, it'll, it'll rub it and run itself in if it's not too bad. You can see mine spins nice and easily now. So now let's see, well first I gotta close this gap. Now what I'm gonna try to do is kind of weld this together. I got one of those cheap handheld 3D printer pen things. I'm gonna be using orange rather than the, the same color to print it in just so I can see how well it penetrated. The extruder on this one seems to be struggling. Maybe if you wanna try it this, get a little bit of a better one. Well, that looks ugly, but let me see how it ends up. Yeah, it worked. It's not the best. I think my technique is the biggest culprit. Also, the handheld 3D printer pen that I have, the extruder motor just sucks, so I wouldn't get that one. But it does work. If I didn't use orange, obviously, it would blend in a lot better, and I could take a, a razor and kind of smooth it out a bit more. But for testing, that'll work. Let's start by just testing the PWM control. Uh, I kind of want to see how slow it will go. Seems to be about it. Crank her up. <laughs> so one more thing I want to test before we see how it performs is the adapter. Now I want this to be able to go on either like a case, fan mount area, or a radiator, which if it has the holes, that's fine. But for like an air cooler, most air coolers come with like a fan with these little clips on there. And I try to make the distance between the face and the top of the uh, offset to be about the same as like an A12X25. So I'm hoping these fan clips work about the same. Now the gasket would be useful for like a case maybe, or a, for sure a radiator for when you want that better seal. But for an air cooler, probably not a huge deal. Let's just see if these clips work and if it can hold that adapter. Oh God, it's so heavy. <laughs> It's holding it though. You might want some more supports if this is something you want to plan on doing. Probably not the best idea. If you have one of those down facing air coolers, much better if you want to do something like that. All right, let's see how she pushes air through a radiator. So I have it set up just like I'm going to be running the next season of the Fan Showdown 
we had a community poll on the channel and the consensus was that pushing air through a radiator and then measuring the airflow out the back was uh, the best way to get a real world idea of which fan was probably cooling the best. Keep in mind, we're gonna be mounted to an AIO this time. So you got two water lines that you need to be conscious of to get everything to fit together. All right, it looks like 492 is gonna be the benchmark. Nope, 495, 495. We'll call it 495. 1093. So we are getting a significant improvement over our uh, single Noctua, but 1096, we'll call it 1093. Well, we learned that it pushes air through a radiator like a beast, but I'm gonna assume that most people that are gonna download this model and print it out and create this turbo looking thing for fun aren't gonna mount it on a radiator. You're probably just gonna stick it on the front of your case, given that it's so huge, it probably won't fit in a case and just act as like a extra bit of boost intake air. And that's how I got it set up here. So there's many ways to build a PC. There's a wrong way and a right way. And then there's kind of the way I do it, which is just like, meh, my way. A lot of people would look at what I got here and be like, <laughs> wrong. I have fans on the top and the bottom. They're both set up in exhaust, pushing air out the bottom through this radiator, out the top through this radiator. And before this turbo was here, there was just nothing there. The air would just work its way in and then just be drawn out both sides. And that's what I like because it looks cool. Nine out of 10 times when form and function come together, I'm choosing form every time. I'm gonna choose what I think looks better than what might perform better. Now, what I'm hoping happens here is that when I do like a render test and some gaming, I'll do both a render test and gaming with this thing off and see where the temperatures sit. And then I'm gonna do the same test again and hope that when I flip this thing on to full power, that little extra boost of cool air will help bring the temperatures down and hopefully the performance of my 5950X up a little bit. Pretty much long-term testing is what I wanna do, but if any performance is gained, that's a bonus. Now I've been running this same render through the same old video a few times to try to get the, the loop all heated up nice. And you might notice the difference on the turbo there. I reprinted the compressor wheel. I gave it a little bit more clearance to just let everything spin around a little better and I try to take some weight out of it. Um, that's pretty much the only change I made to that. All the fans in the case, I went into the BIOS and set all the fan curves to just max RPM to try to keep things as apples to apples as possible on the setup I got here. And we can see that right now, during this latest render, the GPU temperature is sitting around 47 degrees. The CPU temperature is sitting around 69. And the CPU clock speed is 4600, 4700. 4725, we'll just call it 4700-ish. And I'm gonna hit the turbo button and see if we notice any differences. All right, this is about the third time through this render. GPU temperature is sitting around 45, it looks like. CPU 66-ish fluctuating. And the clock speed pretty much unchanged. It's 4600, 4700. I don't know, so maybe a minor improvement to uh, temperatures with a severe penalty to uh, our noise levels, but let's see how it does in gaming. I've played a couple games here of Overwatch 2. It's sitting around 60, 61 for the uh, GPU temperatures. CPU is sitting around 80, 81. CPU clock, eh, so around the same, 4600, 4700. This is about game three, and the temperatures did come down a little bit. Now we're sitting at a CPU temperature about 56. Oh no, that's GPU temperature about 56. CPU temperature about 75 and the clock speed's about the same, 4700. So there is performance to be gained, I guess. Huh. Well, we could say that we did get better performance. We saw it, you know, maybe a degree here or there in the render test and gaming, but we paid for that performance in a bunch of noise. Like we dropped a few degrees, maybe a degree or two, but we, we went a lot louder. Even with the fans in the case and the water pump, set to just run full speed to keep everything as even as possible, the noise level pff, through the roof, which isn't bad. Like for rendering, I could deal with that, you know, kick this thing on when I run a render to maybe get a few seconds out of it because I leave the room anyway. But for gaming, definitely not worth it. Netflix didn't, there's not like I gain a whole bunch of FPS on Overwatch 2, um, but either way it was cool. And I did learn a lot about the design. I changed the, the, the compressor to give it a little more clearance and more forgiveness. It's still moving air. And now I have it set up to run off my motherboard and I learned a little bit about that as well. Right now it's set at 20% and it doesn't really ramp up till like 80, 80 degrees it starts to go up and I can only get 90% out of this fan before the fan header on the motherboard can't give it enough power and it just kicks off. So 90% is the limit in this configuration. So I'll have to do some more thinking of what fan I'm gonna use 
Uh, maybe I get an external fan hub for this other project I'm working on. But either way, it's been a lot of fun. All the models for this will be on my Thingiverse. So you can download it, use it any way you want. Any changes that I make to this as I work towards this other build I'm going towards, I'll update the model so when you go there, it'll always be the most up-to-date stuff. And I know you'd be very upset if I ended the video without doing a smoke test. So I went and got the smoke machine, this thing full power, these fans full power, and I ran some smoke through there so you could get a good visualization of how the air is moving from this turbo through the in, well, this is the intake side on my case, through the intake and out the other fans. And it's, you can see it is pushing a lot of air in there. So that cool air based on the room temperature is gonna give you a bit more performance than the stagnant hot air in the case. But either way, it was fun. If you download this model and work it into your build, make sure to like tweet me a picture of your setup. So I'd like to see how you use it. I had fun doing it. Hopefully I get this other project sorted out. I hope you get subscribed to see it. And I'll see you next time.